All right, the Reds, we're at Chester FC this morning. We're in the home dressing room, and this is where the lads who play for Chester will be preparing on Saturday to face the likes of Naby Keita, of Fabinho, of all the rest of the boys that are kicking on that aren't involved at the World Cup. Uh, it is, Glenn, the first uh, pre-season friendly, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it now. I'm excited. It's boss to be in here. Big thanks to Chester for letting us have a look around this morning. Um, and yet there's 26 players that have returned to training for Liverpool this week. Um, Van Dijk and Van Alden haven't reported back yet. Uh, Henderson, Alexander Arnold, Lovren, and Firmino are still involved at the World Cup, of course, as is Mignolet. Uh, and Mane and Salah are having some time off after their games in Russia. So, the full list, should we do the full list or should we do a predicted 11? What do you reckon? Oh, both. Both. Okay, let's, yeah, do, both. Let's, do... Let, let's do full yeah. list first. Um, you can help me with some of these pronunciations, Glenn, because I'm traditionally crap at this <laughs> kind of thing. Um, Camacho, yep. is that right? Shiravella, Klein, Fabinho. Gomez, Gravera, Ings, Jones, Carius, Keita, Kavim, Kelleher. Yeah, him. Um, Kent, Clavin, Lalana, Markovic, Milner, Moreno, Ojo, Origi, Phillips, Robertson, Solanke, Sturridge, Ward, Wilson, Woodburn. That's the full list that Jurgen Klopp can select from for this friendly. Uh, the Echo has kindly done a, a predicted 11. See if you agree with this in a minute, Glenn. Uh, they're saying it will be to start Carius in goal. We oui. Klein at right back, uh, Clavin, Gomez, Robertson, Keita, Fabinho, and Lalana in midfield, uh, and Wilson Wood and Woodburn in front of them, and then a Rigi in front of them. Uh, that's what they've gone forward. You reckon? Uh, I mean, doing predicted 11s for friendlies is quite quite a nice well, move. I quite like here we that. are. But <laughs> here we are. I think um, judging from like the manager's past selections in friendlies, he tends to go with one selection for the first half and then yeah. makes 11 changes in the second half um, and he usually mixes up the quality to be fair so we'll put maybe a few starters in with the with a load of you know youngsters or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah can expect to see that but i think everyone's excited to see the, the new lads aren't they uh, for absolutely you know and, and, and kaita um first look at them get a chance to see new haircuts new boots um new so, kit new kit it's always a good thing about you know friendlies um What's on the pitch isn't that great, but it's just nice to have. The yeah. pitch, by the way, yeah. looks lovely. We just went out to another look, and um, one of the one of the fellas who works here at the club, who's um, twisting my arm to buy merchandise, I'm going, I'm going to buy a badge, I think. Um, he, he was saying he doesn't want our players running around cutting it all up after the groundsman's hard work, but I think when you've got Naby Keita running around and uh, keen to impress on his debut for Liverpool, he's going to be throwing a few tackles in, isn't he? I hope so. Yeah, um, and there's, yeah, the intensity is always quite good. Sometimes it depends. I mean, they're never memorable friendlies, but uh, nah, but, but there's bits and bobs, isn't yeah. there? There's things you can say from them. Someone will hit a cracker, or you know, you just get a little glimpse of something. I mean, it, it was interesting when we went to Hong Kong the other year, wasn't it? And you know, because we went out there, we got the chance to ask Klopp a few questions in press conferences and all that. And rather than you know seeking tabloid tittle tattle, I was genuinely interested in in what he thought of pre-season games like so, so i said to him you know do you think of it as an, a competitive game do you want to see the players going for it or do you want to see them hold something back and not get injured and just get a little bit of fitness his answer then and i, d I doubt it's changed because he's the same man was he wants to see them going for it. he wants to see them playing to the highest intensity they can to the best level they can and if he thinks they're knackered and he thinks they need to be taken off well it's only a friendly and he'll do that so basically he was asking them, he was saying, at least in that answer, that he wants them to allow him to manage them rather than them managing themselves, if you like. So, you know, the idea, and then from the Chester point of view, I mean, what are they, level six in, in, in terms of the football pyramid, a non-league club, of course. But nevertheless, I mean, if you're sitting in here on Saturday, putting the strip on, getting ready to play in this game, you're going to want to impress, aren't you? You know, all your mates are going to be here, it's going to be a big crowd. There is a little bit of a fuss, obviously, that the game clashes with the England-Sweden game, but, you know, we're coming to the important one, Liverpool. Um, but those lads will want to impress in front of a big crowd. They'll want to impress the manager in terms of starting for the new season. But, you know, say they do something. You know, say you're, say you're Meg Naby Keita. You know, you can go home that night, can't you, and be like, Hi, Meg Naby Keita, isn't yeah. it? <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a massive game in, in, in these, you know, Chester players' careers. Um, not sure. I mean, they're trying to be getting Naby Keita shirt after the game. Yeah, all be a race to get all that. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of on your, you know, how seriously Liverpool take these friendlies. I think it's it's kind of a process throughout the summer. At least that's the impression I've got. Is that 
the first few games are literally just about getting the fitness up. You know, they've only just returned to pre-season training, although they have been doing work over the summer. I think the manager's been quick to, to stress that. Um, and then as you go along further through the summer, you see more tactical work added in. And it, it, it is a bit of a, like a dress rehearsal for the opening game of the season. But that summer we were in Hong Kong was pretty um, interesting in that there was a Champions League qualifier pretty mm -hmm. much thrown in right at the start. Because I can just remember the intensity of that that, su that summer was, was really noticeable because Liverpool had to be out of the block sprinting yeah. straight away because they couldn't really afford to be slow, especially in that Champions League qualifier. So might be a bit different this summer, uh, although there's nine friendlies, I think, in total. Yeah. So plenty of opportunity to, you know, first of all, get fitness under the belts and then maybe work on um, tactics, maybe new formations and stuff for the build a base for the season ahead. But it's interesting the way it's staggered in terms of players' comebacks as well, isn't it? Because we know that, you know, Klopp backed by a sports science team and everything else, they don't, to me, to me anyway, it seems that they don't take too many risks with players' fitness. And so I almost wonder when we see the first game is West Ham, isn't it? Um, when we see the team for that, there may be one or two that will miss out initially because you'll probably be saying, well, they're not quite at the level yet because they came back later than these lads. So these lads who are starting you know, against Chester on Saturday, they've got a chance here, haven't they, to, to be in with a shout for, for the first team place come the first day? Yeah, you're really looking at a number of spots where there may be chances for like further first team opportunities. I'm looking at maybe Joe Gomez coming back from injury. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold's had a busy season. He's, just, he's obviously still at the World Cup. It's a lot for a 19-year-old to yeah. take. So there really is a chance for Joe Gomez to prove he's over his injury and probably be first choice right back for the first few games of the season. And um, that said, Trent's still 19 and I'm sure he's not tired and wants to play as much as he can. But just these little things that can you know motivate players in, in, in the summer to go the extra mile in these friendlies. Um, talking up front as well, Salah, Mane, Busy seasons, busy summers. Um, Origi's come back. Yeah. He's hoping to, he's hoping to stake a claim in Jurgen Klopp's plans. Um, and then also Harry Wilson as well. Yeah. Uh, probably feels he should have had more first team opportunities at Liverpool. Did really well at Hull last season. Um, but, the, but he might, to be fair, he might go before you know the preseason's finished because I know a number of teams are interested in him. So there's a few there, isn't there? I, you know, I was just looking at the list again there. There's a few there where you think you know they're probably playing for to really impress the manager or maybe to impress teams that they potentially transfer to or loan to. You know, you, you run through the, quiz, the, the list uh, quickly there. And you know, even even like quite senior players, like there's a bit of a question mark, I would say, around Lallana maybe. Markovic, obviously, I mean, is he ever gonna leave that fella? Um, Moreno, little bit of a question mark, now not with the, with the form of Robertson, and he you know, didn't really get a sniff there. Ojo, another one where you think maybe about now, he, he needs to, you know, be doing something or move on perhaps. Origi, as you mentioned, a bit of a hit and miss um, loan spell at Wolfsburg, didn't really sort of pull up trees there and there's some mitigating circumstances, but nevertheless, he's gonna to have to do something pretty special probably over the pre-season to be in with a shout once we kick off. Um, and then, you know, it's storage as well. Storage is another one, isn't he? I mean, you see him pictures the other day of him kicking around Melwood and obviously he's fit and it looks like he's ready to go. And I seen someone this morning, I don't know who it was, they just tweeted like, you know, uh, mad story of the season, Sturridge comes back and scores a load of goals for Liverpool. I mean, can you really see that happening? It'd be nice. I mean, Would be nice. I, uh, I always think pre-season's a bit of a bit of a tease, to be honest. I remember Solanke pulling up absolute trees yeah, yeah, during yeah. the pre-season. Um, and, and you sort of had in your mind that could be a really viable option for Liverpool, uh, you know, that season. Um, it's really difficult to judge because players are at different levels during the preseason. <laughs> the the one player who I don't think has ever teased during the preseason is Markovic. No, um, he had an half at Tranmere, didn't he? <laughs> Which was his big chance, and and then just got literally Klopp was like an almost post match. Nah, it's not for me. Him, um, and, that, and that was that. So he's got to go. He's got to go to get his football. It's not happening at Liverpool. We know that. It was a mad picture of him kicking around with no top on, wasn't it? Yesterday. <laughs> And I just thought, is, is this part of the sales pitch? I mean, there's some, someone else has been doing mad things uh, with no top on as well, but we're going to talk about that in, in the second half. Uh, right now, uh, we're, going to, we're going to have a chat with someone from Chester about the club, about this friendly, about the problems around the World Cup clash and all that sort of stuff. And then after that, we'll be back with a bit more hot, hot, hot football chat about the Reds. We've got to stop using that phrase. 
Okay, joined now by a director of Chester FC, Jeff Banks. Here, Jeff. First off, um, you know how important is it for the likes of Liverpool saying yes to this friendly, and also you know it's been out there that they are saying that you know Chester can have a hundred percent of the gate receipts from this game, which isn't always the case. How important is that you know that gestures like that are made by by the bigger clubs up the chain, if you like? I think it's a fantastic gesture. Um, you know, I think for years you know, the smaller clubs have been crying out for help. Um, you know, from from the big boys, if you like, um, and obviously Liverpool just being up the road. Um, it's 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 a great gesture, but it's also you know knowing that the side that Jurgen's bringing as well. You know, you sometimes get Premier League clubs bringing their their youth yeah. teams. You know, and it. It doesn't quite have the same, you know, sort of impact. But you know, knowing that this match is sold out, um, it shows that the draw, you know, the, the players that are coming in, as have with particularly the Chester fans, and obviously it's the first chance for Liverpool fans, you know, following the Champions League final, um, to actually see the, the lads in action, and I'm sure the new signings hopefully as well. But I think you know, in, in the bigger picture, you know, this means an awful lot to to our football club. Um, obviously, we reformed the club eight years ago, and this is definitely the the most high profile match you know we've had pre-season certainly, um, you know, at, at this ground. And I, I think everybody will be embracing that on Saturday and it'll be glorious weather to go with it as well. Where are you now? Where, where where is the club at now, and what are you looking forward to next season? I mean, you've obviously brought in Anthony Johnson and Bernard Morley, who people might know from watching the. The Salford documentary on the BBC, they both came across really well on that, I thought. I thought they were both really likeable characters and I thought it was quite a coup from where I'm standing that you got them as in as the management team. So what are the aims for next season and, and where's the club at now financially? So I think, you know, just just jumping back a little bit towards where January, you know, where the club were, um, uh, I think that the problems were identified at that point and there was a bit of a hole there. So £50,000 was literally needed to keep the club going until the end of the season. Um, so, you know, we all sort of put our heads together to see what we could actually do. Um, I got in touch with Colin Murray, obviously a bit of a red, but he's also yeah. a blue in terms of Chester blue. Um, and he was very keen to help and obviously pulled Michael Owen, um, you know, in as well. Um, you know, a lot of thanks to both of those guys for actually, you know, getting a, a, a quite a star-studded team together for this ground as well and that that as well as the the youth match that we had here uh, where we asked people to come down normally it would be a free match to come into and um, the, the lads were playing in a youth cup match and um, from that match in the the all-stars game we raised nearly 40,000 um, of the 50 and you know donations came in in a side you know from that which helped us get well past the 50 um, and we were we, we broke the hundred thousand barrier, so it just shows that there is support out there, and the, the people maybe at the time should have been asking for help rather than just waiting to see what was maybe coming next. Yeah, it's brilliant that Chester's back on its feet and it, it's flying and it's doing well. And if you can get down here and watch a match, if you can make Chester your second club, if you like, and come down and support them when Liverpool aren't playing, or if you're just li visiting the area and you fancy taking in a game and maybe Liverpool are playing the Sunday and Chester are playing the Saturday, come down because you know your your money will be appreciated at this level, as you've heard there. And it is what is known as a Phoenix club as well. It, it did go to the wall, Chester City, brought back to life by the fans, uh, the likes of Jeff and others, uh, got it back to it feet so it's important to keep football clubs like this going something the Anfield wraps behind uh, we support clubs like Marine like Bootle like Prescott Cables and we, th we think it's important that you know football clubs like that continue to thrive as well as the big boys like Liverpool so uh, if you can help please do uh, we'll be back in a minute with more football chat. Okay, now we're in the away dressing room. So this is where the Reds will be. This is where they'll line up. This is where they get changed. And a little bit smaller than the home dressing room, not as nice as the home dressing room. I like that. I like that little bit of, small bit of needle that every football club should basically do. Um, just having a chat with the cleaning lady there as well. And she was asking what, Liv what Liverpool's changing rooms like. She'd had been on the Man City tour and yeah, fair to say it's a world away from this. But I wanted to show you this as well. This is, um, Chester's kit. Um, this is the one that I presume they're wearing on Saturday when they play against Liverpool. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's all right. Um, the lad, as I said before, was trying to uh, get me to buy all kinds on my way in. Um, the problem for me is the majority of it's blue, Glenn. Hmm. Uh, so I'm not not really into wearing blue football scarves for obvious reasons. No, you're not. Um, you got the red clipboard as well. I have. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, Glenn's ripping me about this, but the idea behind this is. Um, you know we sometimes do it outside and you're all keen to point out when uh, the sound isn't up to your exacting standards. Uh, but also it's hard with, with all the notes and bits of paper and all this. So, you know, I'm a clipboard wanker now. 
Uh, have, we, have, we, have we even put some stickers on the back? So, and it's a lovely, a lovely shade of red, which is how, how things should be. Uh, but speaking of the clipboard, uh, I've got some other stuff to talk about. Um, there is still uh, goss going on, as ever. Uh, we mentioned Harry Wilson earlier. Uh, he's been linked again to a move away from Liverpool. Uh, Celtic this time. Uh, the Express is saying that Brendan Rodgers, though, is struggling to convince Liverpool FC that that is the right move for him. Um, I mean, where do you stand on the whole Harry Wilson thing? I mean, you know, you obviously cover the club for ESPN. You, you're keeping up to speed, but all you, I know you go and watch the under 23s yeah. and, and that sort of stuff. I, I've not seen too much of him. I, I've always seen, you know, the goals, the assists. I know he did well on loan and all that sort of stuff. But the thing that, as a, as a Liverpool fan, I, I look at is why has he never got a go? Yeah, I, I wonder the same question, to be fair. I've watched a lot of his season in the under 23s where he scored 28 goals. And you were just wondering to yourself, why hasn't mm. that merited more than, I think it was 15 minutes of first team action away at Plymouth in an FA Cup replay. Um, you think it's just physicality, his size? That's what it was. I think Michael Beale, former under-23s manager, was actually on an Anfield rap show with us like a few years back and Gibbo asked that exact question and he said it was just he needed time to grow into his man bones, um, to the exact words. Um, I, I, I don't know, I think Liverpool have played a, a few games with Wilson in the they were only willing to sanction his loan move to Hull if, yeah, in January if he signed a new contract. And mm. probably a bit of self-preservation on the club's behalf. Um, and maybe that's what you know the club have got to look out for their interests first and foremost. But definitely, I think Wilson's proved that he's far too good for under-23 levels. He's probably too good for championship level if you go by his form. Uh, you know, for the last, last, latter half of last season, he was really good. I think it was seven goals in 14 appearances in the championship helping their pull stay up. So that's some good going. Um, where is his next step, you ask? Um, and no, no championship teams are sniffing around him now. Mm. Celtic, obviously. Uh, it just depends whether it's another loan move or a permanent move. I'd probably say he wants, he, him himself, should probably look for a permanent move because he can't keep going out every year on loan in the hope that you know, Liverpool will finally take him up on his offer because what he's, he's 21 now. Mm. Um, Younger, horse, younger horses are in the stable in terms of Liverpool, aren't they? you got Curtis Jones coming through. Ben Woodburn's, you know, two or three years younger than him. Yeah. Uh, the, the time might have, you know, passed Wilson by, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but young players just have such a short window to make that opportunity. Uh, and it might have just passed. But then again, we've seen players, you know, emerge onto the scene quite late. Um, and you're hoping Wilson's a case of that. I mean, it must be it must be a bit dispiriting for him, you know, having played first team football, having the you know the crowd appreciating what he's doing, teammates all over him, seeing his name in in the papers, people talking positively about him on social media, and then he sort of drops back to being essentially just a, a squad member. That must be hard, mustn't it? And you can understand perhaps if if he does move on, why he's going to move on. Yeah, he's he's also had some really untimely injuries as well. He had a. Uh... He had an injury in the pre-season, uh, just gone, which meant that he couldn't have any chance to sort of impress the manager. Uh, and as I say, it's just such a small window and it must be really frustrating for him that he hasn't had more than 15 minutes of action because yeah. he certainly deserves it. And it's worth a mention in um, his attitude's been first class when yeah, he's dropped down to like the under 23s and he's always spoke really positive and highly of Liverpool. And at the end of the day, I think his dream is literally to just Make make the grade at Liverpool, and you can't you can't knock him for wanting to keep pursuing that dream. And, he, and he's played for the full international team, hasn't he? He's played for Wales. So that's another sort of tick in the box, if you like. Another manager who's gone, he is good enough. Yeah. So he, he I think he's still Wales' youngest ever player yeah. when he was called up at sixteen, and um, then sort of didn't get a look in because of injuries and stuff. And uh, but he was recently called up to Ryan Giggs' squad for the cup in China uh, in, in this summer. So. That was obviously on the back of his form for for Hull, so he'll still want to maintain and you know be in that Wales squad because you wouldn't really. But to do that, he's going to need to be playing first team yeah, game course, yeah. uh, week in week out, and probably uh, as it stands, it's not going to happen at Liverpool at the moment, is it? Uh, another one then. Uh, last night, uh, David Maddock from the Mirror going hard and strong on the idea that uh, Carius will start the new season as Liverpool's number one. Uh, much to the fume of many Liverpool fans, it's fair to say. Um, the, the story from David was basically that um, you know while Liverpool have looked at other goalkeepers, uh, Allison and Oblak are deemed too expensive. 
and that basically Klopp doesn't want to just sort of buy for the sake of it, a bit of a Van Dyke situation if you like, in that he's got certain targets in mind and he isn't prepared to sort of deviate from them to anyone else and he would rather, it seems, according to Dave Maddock at least, stick with Karius. Um, what, what do you make to, to this, Glenn? I mean, it, it, it seems a bit of an early shout to be saying this really in that, you know, what are we in July still? Um, obviously the window does close earlier this season but nevertheless you've still got till August and you've still got the World Cup to finish when you expect you know things to ramp up a little bit so it just seems a little bit of an early shout that for me yeah I, I think we're, we're going to be in for a frantic few weeks after the World Cup finishes especially with this window coming forward and I, th- I don't I, I think that I haven't got the impression that Liverpool have you know, like with Van Dijk and Keita, they were unmovable targets for mm. Klopp. I don't think we've sort of heard about a goalkeeper like that yet. Um, I wonder whether it is Allison, one of Allison or Roblack, and maybe they're just waiting for, you know, puzzle d- dominoes to fall because yeah. there could be a domino. You know, what's it called? What do you call when dominoes fall? What's domino it? effect. Domino effect. Nice. <laughs> so there could be a domino effect with, with goalkeepers this season that may mean one of you know Liverpool's prime targets is available. Um, that said. In public, you know, whenever Klopp's going to be asked about it now, he's always going to back Carriers and Mignolet yeah, and, course, yeah. and even Danny Ward. Because he may yeah. have to use all of yeah, those keepers, exactly. so he's not, going to, he's not going to throw them under the bus. I mean, what isn't helping for me, uh, look, Hughes might like it out there, this is just my opinion. I don't understand why Carriers is throwing out a video on Instagram of him, like, you know, playing table tennis and having no top on and all little moody looks into the camera. Essentially, like, what a model would do for, like, I don't know, an aftershave advert or something like that. Like, given what's gone on and given his current standing at Liverpool, in football, with the fans, whatever you want, you know, people will still remember what happened in the Champions League final. Quite obviously, one of the biggest games of football in the world. Maybe just keep your head down a little bit. I don't understand why he or his team or whoever's putting that stuff out on his official account is doing it right now. He's just opening the doors for criticism, opening the doors for people to go, what's the score with this fella? His mind isn't in the right place. Look at him. He's waltzing around on beaches, taking his top off, showing you his tattoos and doing moody looks into the lens when he should be practising being a goalkeeper, maybe. I just don't think it helps you, mate. Look, I know you've got... I know they have spare time and all that, and there's plenty of time to train and do things like that. I just think the time of it's a bit strange. Yeah, it's it's a different world that sort of I will never really understand in the expo- expanding brands and stuff. And yeah, that, that's all. That's all what it is. And I, to be honest, if I was a footballer in the summer, I wouldn't be interested in any of that, especially after the summer the carries that. Just I'd love to, be- to see a video of you, Glenn. You know, <laughs> rock and round, taking your top off, driving along the beach. Playing table tennis. Playing tennis, just hitting the net every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Coming soon on the Ampere. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, to be honest, if I was in Carrie's situation, I'd just want a holiday. Uh, get your head down. Get, get your head down. Um, and just, just switch off because I know it's difficult. But then again, he's a footballer and he's got to where he is because he believes in himself and he's got a lot of confidence. And yeah, no, I've, I've, yeah I've, I actually interviewed him in the past and I couldn't sort of get over just how like a laid back person he is um, and yeah, I suppose you've got to be that to be a goalkeeper yeah, yeah. but goalkeepers have got to be crazy is the old saying um, but yeah I, I can see why you know it sort of hasn't gone down too well amongst, amongst others just because uh, not, not for, it's just a bit weird that, that's the only thing I'd say but we're coming from and someone someone said it's a Baywatch music yeah, now as that's well, where the watch. Uh, yeah. which, which is quite funny to be fair but again you know we're all having a bit of a laugh and it's like but this is the lad potentially, according to David Maddock, who's going to be keeping goal for Liverpool next season. And there's lots of arguments between Reds going on about some saying we just need to back him, and if that's the manager's decision, you need to back that, and we shouldn't all be having a go, and blah, 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 and we shouldn't be talking about a potentially toxic atmosphere. But the facts are that you know a lot of people, and potentially some of the players, aren't going to trust him as a goalkeeper. He's, he almost needs to prove himself again, and... Is, is in goal as the number one for Liverpool the right place to, to prove himself or should there be a little bit of time out the line like before he's thrown back again? Me personally, I would say probably the latter rather than the former. Um, I, I don't think these videos will ever impact a player's performance, will they? Well, no, yeah. but it, it's just perception and image yeah. and, and that kind of thing and what people think of you. And as much as people like to bat that away, that is important, obviously. Um, plugs for the Anfield app today, then out today, 
podcast every day as usual all through the year on the Anfield Wrap uh, for those that subscribe. Uh, there is an end of season quiz there. Uh, I've no idea. I, I have no idea how that went. I wasn't on it, but the normally quite crazy affairs with everyone arguing and calling each other all kinds and one of them kind of thing. I presume it's more of the same. People seem to like it, which is why I've done another one. So that's out there. Alphabet soups out as well. I'm not sure what letter they're up to. But the idea behind this one, if you haven't heard about it before, is um, basically loads of stuff from Liverpool or Merseyside, beginning with a letter and then a panel that you know explains what it is. So it can be bands, it can be areas of Liverpool, it can be pubs. It just gives you a flavour of, of culture of Liverpool and Merseyside. And again, a lot of people who listen love that show. So there's one of those out there today. Uh, and just to finish up before we go, I uh, just wanted to say a big hello to Benjamin Green on the Anfield Apps Facebook page. Uh, he very kindly left a message yesterday saying, A week without Gareth Roberts. What have we done to deserve such a blessing? Sorry, I find him annoying. But to you, Benjamin, I'm not going anywhere, lad. <laughs> That has been uh, Talking Reds from Chester FC. Get yourself down to the game. Forget England. <laughs>